First off, an apology for a couple of things. Um, I forgot to turn off the autofocus on the camera, so occasionally the camera doesn't know whether to focus on my hand or on the painting. I fixed that now, but um, sorry about that. And secondly, um, for most of the film, the painting is slightly rotated to the left, or even though the viewfinder in the camera showed that I was filming it straight. So sorry about that as well. Anyway, this is a painting based on um, a photograph that my wife took yesterday in the snow that we have here. Um, it's always good policy to uh, base some of your paintings on your wife's input, I think, occasionally. Um, I have a little bit of a, a rule that I don't base my paintings on anything other than local scenery and um, I have to take the photograph. I mean there are pl obviously plenty of photographs on the interwebs that you can use for inspiration for your paintings but I um, have a rule for myself that um, I have to take the paint the, the photograph or in this case I'll stretch it to my wife. Um, but we've had snow for a few weeks, so I thought I'd uh, finally get around to painting a snow scene. Stretch the paper again. Um, since we're doing uh, the sky was, was quite a... Well, the whole, I washed the whole thing with, with blue and then natural sienna. Um, the sienna at the bottom to create a bit of warmth in the snow. And again, um, sunlight through the trees. I seem to be uh, having a bit of a phase for that at the moment. Same, same approach there, a little bit of water where the sun is and then paint the trunks into the water and let it fade out. This is the uh, desert green from Schmincke, which granulates beautifully and separates out. Oh, you just about see it there, separates out, although certainly the trees on the left separates out into uh, a deep reddish brown colour and uh, a green, if you give it a chance to. final image there's plenty of variation in, in the pine trees that I'm drawing on the right hand side just now and plenty of granulation as well possibly a little bit difficult to see the bristle brush again the one that I've mutilated using some nail clippers uh, I find it very useful for painting things like this I tend to paint a lot of pine trees because that's what we have where I live and very good for quickly blocking in trees of this nature the paper is not damp at the moment so I'm getting sharp edges on the trees for a change I softened the ones further further away in the, on the horizon but these trees near the camera I'm going to keep them sharp. Having said in my last video that I very rarely use black, that is in fact black I'm using there. That was some long brown hair that had ended up in the painting there. Don't know where it came from because my hair is not long and it's not brown. Bit of texture in the tree from the main tree trunk that you can see there. The ground under under the in a in a pine forest like that is fairly scruffy. Lots of dead branches and things sticking up. So just increasing the number of trees and the thickness of the trees. I 
I've actually simplified it quite a lot, that, that area on the right uh, compared with the photograph. Just trying to find the right balance between random leaves here and there, or random branches, broken branches, branches lying at an angle, old trees, young trees. A little bit, um, a little bit more black since we are painting contra jour that they, um, they are actually a, a lot darker in the photographs so I've left a lot more life in them in, in the painting that uh, is a mixture of the sky blue with the desert orange and Anybody who paints, if you, you'll, you'll recognize this when you paint a color that is exactly right and it gives you a, a real kick. And, and you, you can just paint away knowing you've got the color exactly right for the, for the painting that you're doing. So that was a good um, I mean, as a, as a rule, any shadows like that certainly in the snow should should reflect the sky, um, but should be darker than the sky. I think the sun, as strong as it is. The strange thing is, the sun um, is in the right place in the photograph, but you'll notice that it, the, the shadows don't really follow the, the the direct don't point towards the sun. It's very strange how things like that can actually happen in photographs. Um, You probably wouldn't have noticed if I hadn't pointed it out, but it is—it's um, a strange phenomenon you can get with with, photogra with, uh, with photographs where the shadows behave in a manner that you don't really expect. So just adding some footprints and tracks after some wheels, obviously. hadn't used the spray bottle for a while so probably time to do that. That's just me using a bristle brush just to soften the edges of the of the footprints. And the snow is not deep enough to cover the ground completely so there are small tufts of grass sticking up. Little patches of bare ground. Again, just using the uh, forest green. Oh, a visit from the cat there. <laughs> Quick inspection. <laughs> everything's, everything's in order, so off she goes again. Um, deep and deepen in the shadows where the, the road meets the, the slight incline to the, to the right of the road. Softening the edge of the snow there. Softening the footprints again. And the odd sharp twig sticking up out of the snow. Strengthening the trees again. Discussed this before the um, Watercolour always dries a lot lighter than than you paint it initially, so you occasionally have to go back and revisit areas that you thought maybe were finished, but then when they've dried, they turn out not to be finished. So what I'm doing there is deciding whether I need a tree on the left. So I'm using the shadow of my hand to see what would happen if we put a shape in there. And deciding yes, we do need a tree on the left. So we paint one of those. Same mixture. It's actually desert green, isn't it? Called it forest green early on, but it's not, it's desert green, which is strange because there's not much green in deserts, but it's a very 
Subdued green colour works very well in this instance, pine trees in winter. Again keeping the, 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 the focus in the painting sharp, even if the camera keeps adjusting the focus and it goes ever so slightly out of focus. So I think that worked well with the, um, the dark shapes on the left there, even though that tree is not there in real life. There comes a point when you, if even if you're working from photographs, there comes a point where you actually need to forget the photograph and just do, just do something, do do what the foot the, the painting requires, not what's in the photo. Do what's best for the painting. So that's it. Thanks for watching.